miss me. The Mask, played by Jim Carrey, apart from being intensely entertaining, can be viewed as a vivid and illustrative example of magic consciousness structure. In this video, I will demonstrate how the film shows the act of surrendering consciousness to the archaic transpersonal powers. One of the consciousness structures that we're going to review here with the help of the Mask is the magic structure, which predominated human existence in the pre-civilized world, namely before the ancient megalithic social formations arose, such as Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt. Here are the key elements of magic consciousness. Shamanism, witchcraft, collective ego, and the condition when the I, the ego, is not yet differentiated from the unconscious. The one that the Western culture is characterized with is the mental consciousness structure, which I will touch on throughout the video. Now, in times of hardship and severe challenge, the regression to magic consciousness structure has been a frequent type of indulgence for the Western culture, of which manifestation was always a target of persecution from the cultural center. The persecution as such was both physical and intellectual. Witchcraft was punished by death, whereas magic reasoning and spellcasting was rejected and deemed satanic by medieval Christian philosophy. Enlightenment, on the other hand, discarded such phenomena as it doesn't conform to the mechanistic and causal understanding of the world. In my opinion, the plotline of Mask is a vivid visualization of magic consciousness. We follow a protagonist, Ipkis, who lives in a post-industrialist capitalist world, which is a product and a representation of a deficient mental consciousness structure. Let's look at the major properties of the mental structure dichotomic thinking, spatial sectorialization, rigid division of labor, and monetization of being. Therefore, it is not arbitrary that Ipkis works in a bank, which in some sense represents a miniature model of a deficient mental consciousness structure. However, the instant regression into the magic structure is a very dangerous and psychologically loaded process, which could only take place in times of serious personal trauma, where such act represents an escape and the means of self-preservation. It is noteworthy that in the beginning of the film, we see that Mask was locked in a crate deep down in the water. This is directly reminiscent of Gebser's philosophy. The new consciousness structure emerges through mutations, causing preceding ones to be silenced. However, those silent structures are ever-present and they can re-emerge in critical moments. Thus the name of his major work, The Ever-Present Origin. Now, the purpose of Mask being locked away in the bottom of the ocean is to guarantee that it will never resurface and snatch the modern human ego. Considering that ocean symbolically stands for the unconscious further proves the point. However, the situation that is going on in the city will create the necessary conditions for magic consciousness structure to re-emerge out of the depth of the psyche. Mental structure with its rigid logical reasoning and materialism is very aggressive in its rejection of previous consciousness modalities. Now, the rationale behind such exclusiveness is quite tangible. Namely, mental exists in a perpetual risk of losing autonomy and thus becoming the victim of unconscious forces, losing its rigidly constructed identity. This process frequently takes place when people experience social ostracization. Stanley Ipkiss represents a typical socially awkward nice guy, who is a perfect candidate for experiencing a regression in magic structure. As the old saying goes, nice guys finish last. You printed one of my letters last year. Remember? Nice guys finish last. Ipkiss is always a victim of being taken advantage of. He's fooled by guys at the garage. Also, Peggy stops him in the back as he trusts her out of sheer gullibility. Now, the fact that he never lets anger to manifest itself further accelerates his transformation into a fertile vessel for magic consciousness to enter into. All the anger and bitterness that aggregates into Stanley serves a function of a psychological anchor, which will drag Ipkiss down to the dangerous depths of the psyche. To summarize, he has all the typical properties that make someone a loser. He's always awkward, naive, impressionable, and experiences social rejection. One of the cause of someone activating their shadow is a social humiliation, which Ipkiss has to endure. Therefore, it makes sense that he finds Mask after all the social humiliation and resentment reaches its limit, thus causing him to enter in what's called a maximal stress point. 
The anti-stress effect of losing one's self-constraint is extremely rewarding, which makes Ipkes' transformation even more desirable. Now, interestingly, Ipkes finds mask in water. However, the right word is definitely not find. Rather, it is an act of unconscious offering a solution to his problems, where he has to reject his identity so that he could get a revenge on a modern world. To further this point, we have to draw our attention to how the mask shines at Ipkis, as if he is being allured by a beautiful scene. At first, he thinks that it is a human who is drowning. However, he finds out that it was an illusion, which foreshadows the surrender of the personal identity. Also, the mask's arborescent texture points to its primordial and archaic property, reminding us of Yggdrasil's tree from the Germanic mythology. Now, before we get to the very condition that Ipkis enters into, we need to have a quick look at Mask's anthropological importance. I will offer two conceptions of Mask, the archaic and modern. The first represents a type of medium which aims to squeeze and ossify human three-dimensional being with its emotion, personality and facial expression into a two-dimensional rigid and unchanging symbol. This plays a crucial role in rituals where individuals unite in a collective ego, of which primary technological means is the mask. Mask which guarantees the transportation of humans into a spaceless and timeless condition, which are the primary elements of magic structure that we're also going to witness in the film. However, in ancient Greek culture, specifically in Greek theater, a place where mental consciousness structure starts to emerge, we get a new form of mask. The latter is carried by a performer of theater, although we have a categorical shift going on here. Now we deal with a mask which obscures an individual behind it. Thus, the mask acquires a new purpose. In the case of Ipkis, the individual is still a primary actor. Why? Because the challenge that is put forward to Ipkis is to reborn himself and reaffirm his identity, thus putting higher importance on the individual behind the mask rather than the mask itself. I knew I'd found someone special. The mask. Oh. It's the guy inside the mask. Interestingly, the etymology of mask is connected to men, as the Etruscan word persona is related to Greek prosopon, the mask. When the first transformation takes place, we see a creature who is absolutely confident and exists in a perpetual state of flow. Flow is defined as a mental state in which a person performing some activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process of the activity. The flow state as such is achievable through the inactivation of prefrontal cortex, which houses our social self, the sort of Freudian superego. The first thing that Masks takes care of is of utmost importance. He destroys his prime enemy, the time symbolized by a ticking clock that gets under his skin. The fact that his first target is the clock is quite telling, as Gene Gebzer understands magic consciousness structure to be timeless and spaceless. On the other hand, mental structure, the Western culture in this case, absolutely idealizes time. This is a culture of huge clock towers where every hour, minute and second is spatialized into a discrete unit, thus transforming time into a tangible physical phenomenon, which you should not waste, which costs money, which can be run out of, possessed in greater or smaller quantities, and etc. Thus, we have a contrast between a timeless nighttime of shadow activation and time-dependent daylight, where this dichotomy needs to be overcome by the protagonist. Now, as we noted in magic structure, time and space is not yet objectivized, which brings us to the topic of spacelessness, as after Mask destroys time, then he proceeds to defy the limits and rules of space, as it is understood in mental structure. He demonstrates inhuman ability of elasticity and extension, thus completely rejecting mechanistic laws of physics. The first encounter with bandits demonstrates Mask's central features, which we also see throughout the film. The primary organ that Gebzer designates for magic structure is the ear, labyrinthine cavernous structure in which the human being is enclosed. The primary structural building block of ritual is music, sometimes sung by the shaman, which serves the purpose of snatching human psyche so that the energy of a single individual is channeled into the whole. 
a process where individual identity is lost in a collective rhythmic activity of dancing and being totally gripped by the incoming waves of melody. The shaman is someone who is naturally talented in making people lose their individuality and access an altered state of consciousness. Mask resorts to this skill numerous times. He grips Bandit's attention with his charismatic performance. In the nightclub, he completely takes over and impresses people with how he can put up a show and dance. Lastly, we have the icon police scene. Here the magic takeover of the psyche is best shown as police officers realize that they lose control over their bodies, which totally makes sense as the magic influence is directed towards the body, not the rational ego. In this collective synchronic dance we see a shamanistic ritual guided by the person who very much looks like a shaman. This can be paralleled with a passage from Mikhail Bulgakov's Master and Margarita, where Faggot forces bureaucratic white collar workers to sing collectively in synchrony against their will. <laughs> Getting back to the bandit scene, we also witness the key feature of magic structure, namely the point-like nature of it. Gebzer denotes point as a primary sign of magic structure. The idea here is that the world is conceived as a point-like unity, where a part can stand for a whole, and the whole can stand for a part. Thus, the sorcery, where a witch would ask you to bring someone's hair to exercise spell, now makes sense, as part can be a representative of the whole. Same with the voodoo magic, where an appearance of someone is identical to the person itself. For Gebzer, that is directly connected with Paleolithic magic reasoning, where killing a pictographical animal drawn in the cave directly influences the physical act of hunting. Furthermore, every point can be interchanged with another, as magic structure operates in terms of soft ontology. Here, a logical reasoning of mental structure where A equals A and not A cannot equal A is suspended. Therefore, the difference between external appearance and internal substantiveness disappears. From this, we can understand why Mask is capable of painting the images of real objects and then transforming them into real ones. In comics, Mask possesses the abilities of energy projection, time matter and energy manipulation, telekinesis, telepathy and astral projection. This further coincides with Gebzer's analysis of magic structure, which involves those phenomena as in order for telepathy and energy projection to exist, a human ego has to be enclosed in a collective self. Let's see what Gebzer has to say about this. Magic Man possesses not only the powers of second sight and divination, he was also highly telepathic. Communication between members of the group ego, the we, does not as yet require language, but occurs to a certain extent subcutaneously or telepathically. The egolessness of the individual who is not yet an individual demands participation and communication on the basis of the collective and vital intentions. The inseparable bonds of the clan are the dominant principle. Another noteworthy factor is that the transformation of Ipkis into mask always happens at night, which is of course not insignificant. Apart from night symbolizing the waking of unconscious powers, for Gebzer night represents the abolition of perspectivity. Night where light goes out is a condition where objects lose their extension and dimensionality, where you can confuse things with one another, whereas daylight represents consciousness, an Apollinian order which explains why it is impossible for him to activate mask in daylight. Gebzer takes magic structure to be in a state of sleep, as consciousness has not yet emerged. This explains not only why mask acts activates at night, but rather the interesting scene when Stanley dreams about having all the qualities that he lacks in real life. That's why his dream is followed by a second transformation into the mask, which reminds us of the moments where we want to get back to sleep so that the good dream that we were having carries on. That's exactly what Stanley is doing by getting the mask on. It is interesting to note that both dreaming and being in a flow state are characterized by inactive prefrontal cortex, the judging superego in this 
case. The challenge that Ipkes has to respond is whether he will surrender to the mask or reaffirm his social identity. The mask, which Professor talks about, represents a social role that people adopt in their daily life. However, this is not something that should be frowned on because it is an indispensable building block of social existence. Therefore, Ipkes is in a tricky situation. Does he give up all the pleasurable powers that mask has to offer and conform to his loser lifestyle or reject his sanity and consciousness for the Mephistophelian powers? The answer to this challenge from the professor is quite telling, which predicts the resolution. Go as yourself and as the mask, because they are both one and the same beautiful person. As we see, Ipkes becomes more self-assertive and tough as the film goes on, which shows how he integrates the necessary powers of the mask, a shadow of himself, such as the courage to stand up in the right moments, however simultaneously keeping his social self. This is an act of breaking yourself from the constraint of either-or situation. When this process of integration doesn't occur, we get a classic case of personal tragedy, which I discuss in other videos. The shortcomings of mask is shown in the scene where Ipkes meets Tina. Here, because the process of integration is not yet complete, Stanley transforms into mask. However, Tina is not impressed anymore, which shows that such behavioral pattern is only rewarding in a short term. Naturally, you would not expect mask to have a monogamous healthy relationship with a woman. Thus, we need an individual with a personal identity who sits behind the mask. Now, one of the key differences between mental and magic structure is the element of possessiveness. You see, personal property and intrinsic having as such is characteristic of the mental, whereas in magic everything is indiscriminate. No one is entitled of any possessions, simply because there is no such thing as an autonomous individual yet. This is directly related to the fact that mask in reality doesn't belong to Ipkis. As a matter of fact, it can be used by everyone, including a non-human such as a dog. Now, the character of Dorian, villain of the film, further proves the danger of unhealthy activation of unconscious powers. As we see, Dorian is more powerful when he gets the mask, which exacerbates his criminal tendencies. This shows the contagious nature of magic consciousness structure. Further, Dorian and Ipkis share a property of resentment and unsatisfied desires, thus making them more susceptible to losing consciousness. With these powers, I could be a superhero! I could fight crime, protect the innocent, work for world peace! But first, the Mask, in case of Ipkis, could never be a classical superhero who acquired supernatural powers. In other words, Ipkis would never become a vigilante or a some Spider-Man-like figure, as the latter is the affirmation of a great individual, whereas the former is quite the opposite. Here, anyone is capable of taking over the powers which Mask has to offer. Also, the typical superhero is characterized with free wont, as they have to do things that goes against their desire, thus sacrificing personal needs for the sake of others. The type of regression that Ipkis undergoes thanks to the mask helps him to satisfy his most instinctive needs. A pretty woman, money, revenge, status, rather than serving some abstract notion which is absolutely alien from magic consciousness structure. Therefore, we need Ipkis to address his problems, not the mask, which explains the fact that maskless Stanley is the one who goes through the hardship as he has to affirm his abilities. It explains why the final fight between Ipkis and Dorian happens without the mask, thus letting the conscious Ipkis prove himself. Thus, in the end, we see a victory of an individual not against Dorian, but against the unconscious. The act of flushing Dorian in water and throwing mask in the ocean are both related, as they are both sent into a places where they truly belong. The character development of Stanley Ipkis can be paralleled with the protagonist of The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Here, Walter, who suffers from maladaptive daydreaming disorder, where he regularly fantasizes about him being a tough guy like Ipkis resolves his problem by transforming his dreams into a real life actions, which are surely more modest as it is the case with Ipkis, however it is more authentic and real. That's why Mask's actions and the frequent breaking of the fourth wall is so emphasized, as it needs to be certain that the conditions of Mask is a dreamlike state that can never be confused with being awake. This further supports the point of Mask's absolute dissimilarity with a classical superhero movie.
And for the concluding remark, after Tina throws off the mask as Stanley achieves his goal of self-affirmation, his friend Charlie jumps in the water to get the mask. This brings us to the starting point of my video essay. The unconscious powers of magic structure is ever present and always awaits of being awakened like a sleeping dragon in a medieval mythology.